let's say this is you and this is your opponent right you guys are playing a set and he's always spamming the same op move over and over again and because how plus or safe they are it's tough trying to do something about it what if i were to tell you there's a way to steal your opponent's turn punish their best attacks or get a free combo will you take it if the answer is yes then you come to the right place in this video we're going to be learning the benefits for learning how to flawless block and learning ways on how to master it Welcome to why you should learn how to flawless block in Mortal Kombat 11. What is flawless block? My name is Mad Dog Games and I'm here today to explain to you what is flawless blocking, how it works and why it's important for you to learn as well as the many application it has. A flawless block, or also known as a perfect block, if you're coming from other fighting games, is pretty straightforward. You block the moment your opponent attack lands, hence making the perfect block. It has to be done the first three frames upon contact. Once you do perform a flawless block, you have a couple of options of what to do afterwards. The most effective ones is up two, which launches your opponent up high, allowing you to juggle them for a combo. The other one is up 3, which makes you immune for a few frames and performs a counter attack. These are the most common options and doing so uses one offensive meter and one defensive meter. The great thing about learning how to flawless block is that there are other ways on how to utilize this mechanic. The first approach, I like to call it first impact punish. Technically you can flawless block any pokes or attacks that you could come in contact with immediately. Sometimes you'll see this happen naturally as you try to move forward and block. However, it can be difficult to follow up on this as it's a high skill level, so I wouldn't try to go for these at the beginning. You'll see pro players go for these to change the momentum of the fight. But the risk for doing these is that they can be countered by strings that has multiple hits. But this is where up 3 is 4. The second approach is stealing turns. This is when doing a flawless block will give you your turn back. This is all because doing a flawless block against certain attacks will leave your opponent negative. Some examples are against pokes, jump ins, and or special moves. For example, Shao Kahn's sweep is one of the best in the game because of its range and how quick it activates. Blocking normally will leave a negative 2 on block, which is safe and allows him to get a free poke in if he wants to. However, Flawless blocking will leave him negative 7, which is still safe for him, but loses his additional poke that he will want to go for. And this results in getting your turn back. Third approach is called Flawless Block Gaps. This is the most effective way to utilize this as the opponent's attack has a gap wide enough for you to punish. Certain strings with a lot of pushback and leaves the opponent safe or plus lets you perform these against them. Let's see Liu Kang for example. His Chinese warrior leaves him at plus 4 on block but flawless blocking will turn it into negative 11 on block. Then you can use your 7 frame starter to punish this, or use your resources and do an up 2 for a combo. But this is where you're going to need to know your opponent's frame data because they all have different consequences. Another example, Jackie String leaves her plus 4, but flawless blocking leaves her negative 1. Technically you can't punish this unless you use your resources, but it can still result in kind of losing her turn. The fourth approach is neutralizing projectile zoning. This is when you use flawless block to block a projectile to avoid any chip damage. Let's compare. This is when you take a direct hit when blocking normally. Now this is when you flawless block it. You see the difference? This is an extremely important strategy at a high level match. Honestly, it's the best way to ease your way to start learning this mechanic. Even if you find the first few approaches challenging, this strategy is still great to learn as you get to soften those difficult matchups where projectile really becomes a problem. Like Cassie's low shot, Liu Kang's low fireball, or anything similar. As someone who plays Johnny Cage, I don't have fancy teleports, low projectiles to trade, or any other anti-zoning abilities like absorbing or reflecting projectiles. Spamming does become a problem for me and this is where learning this mechanic becomes very important. Now that you know what it is, the question now is, how do I master it? Before we get there, in my opinion, changing your block settings from triggers to bumpers is much more effective and responsive, and I would highly recommend changing it. 
Here are my settings. Swap the stances, amplifying, and block button will make performing fatal blows be bumpers only. And honestly, I think you'll like this change. I did it because it makes run cancelling in MKX much easier. And in MK11, it makes fatal blow dash cancel easier to perform. But let's get back on track. To master flawless blocking, you must complete two of the following components. 1. Knowledge Just like how I said at the beginning, the only way to succeed in flawless blocking is to know some of your opponent's frame data. Or particularly, the matchup. You don't need to know everything, just one or two attacks that they have that can be flawless blocked. This is where knowledge is power really start to make sense here, because it does. 2. Practice The only way to get better is through practice, because it requires good reaction and muscle memory. And I'll be honest, some are easier than others, so let's practice some of them right now. The attacks that I do know off the top of my head that has flawless block gaps are Shao Kahn's You'll Never Win, Scarlet's Mera Massacre, Jade's Fatal Attraction, Garrus' Matter of Time, Spawn's Heaven and Hell, Liu Kang's Chinese Warrior, Fujin Amplified Warp Needle, and Scorpion's Dark Soul. I want you to start off practicing on Scorpion's Dark Soul. This one is actually easy to flawless block as the gap is pretty big, giving you enough time to react and punish. So what I want you to do is go to trading mode, record Scorpions doing Dark Soul, and block the first hit normally, unblock during the gap, and then block again on the last hit. Practice until you're able to pull it off at least 80% of the time. I can't stress how important practicing really is here. It's not something you can do blindly. It's something you have to prepare yourself for. Here is a tip on landing on it. 50% is based on reaction, but the other 50% is reading your opponent's body language. Look at the arms or legs that they will be using. It helps me know when to block the last hit. Then next, remember the opponent's frame data to see what options it leaves you with. In this case, Scorpion is still plus here, so the only option is to use your resources and punish it that way. Remember, some of the attacks that you can flawless block actually leave your opponent negative, which opens more options for you. I hope this convinced you to start learning this advanced mechanic. I know I'll be putting all my effort in learning and mastering this. I wish I covered this advanced mechanic a lot sooner, but I never thought I had the ability to somewhat pull this off. It's funny because the only reason I made this video is because I saw my opponent abusing the Fujin Amplified Warp Needle and so I started learning how to flawless block. If I can do it, then you guys can too. Consider joining my Discord, we're trying to build a community there where we can share, communicate, and keep learning in the ways of improving ourselves in Mortal Kombat 11. Link will be in the description. I want to thank you guys so much for watching and like this video if you enjoyed this commentary style format. I hope you guys had a good new years and thanks for making this year a good one despite how bad 2020 was. We got to 35,000 subscribers at the end of the 2020. My hope is reaching 50k by the end of 2021. My name is Games and I'll see you guys next time.